Moyen, my name is Daniel Atz, and I am the founder of Lux Citizenship. Today, we're going to take you on our standard tour of Luxembourg City for what we're showing around new citizens about to make their citizenship declaration. The Adolf Bridge is named for Grand Duke Adolf and was built in 1900. It's a bridge made out of stone instead of cement, which makes it really special. The Pont Adolf is built over the Petrus River Valley, and that is this wooded area you see behind us, and the Petrus is the river that runs behind it. And also at the end of the bridge, you see the Spurkies buildings, two of the most famous buildings in Luxembourg City. Our next stop on our tour is Luxembourg's Golden Lady, or the Gela Fra. The Golden Lady is a statue that was originally built to commemorate the brave Luxembourgish soldiers who volunteered in the French army in World War I. But after the events of World War II, it became more of a symbol to those that are a victim of war. Next on our stop is the National Cathedral of Luxembourg, the Notre Dame de Luxembourg. Built in the 1600s, it's a prime example of Gothic architecture mixed with Renaissance architecture. This is a Roman Catholic cathedral and the only cathedral in Luxembourg. It's also the site of important events in Luxembourg, like the coronation of the Grand Duke and the annual Te Deum Mass after the national holiday. So the next stop on our tour is Place Guillaume II, which translates to William II Square which is named for Grand Duke William II, also the King of the Netherlands. Here is really the principal square in Luxembourg City. Behind me, you'll find the Hôtel de Ville, or the mayor's office. And just next to me, you will find the Berger Center, the next stop, and the most important stop today for us as dual citizens. Berger Center means the Citizen Center, and this is where you'll be coming to make your citizenship declaration. You'll go in through the doors behind me, turn right, and grab a B ticket from the machine. Or you can just ask the reception desk. Everyone speaks English. Behind me is a statue to one of the most important people in Luxembourgish history, Grand Duchess Charlotte. Grand Duchess Charlotte was not raised to know that she would eventually be the leader of her country. But in 1919, she succeeded her older sister as Grand Duchess of Luxembourg, becoming one of the first female monarchs in Europe. So now we've arrived at an important place in Luxembourg, the Rue des Marchés aux Herbes, the Herb Market Street. And here on this street, you have both the Chamber of Deputies, Luxembourg's Parliament, and the Grand Ducal Palace. So here first, we have the Chamber of Deputies. Each five years, Luxembourgish citizens are called to vote for 60 deputies that make up our parliament. And you, as a dual citizen, have the right to vote by absentee ballot. Now, something that is really different in the United States is that if you actually were to live in Luxembourg as a citizen, you would be obligated to vote every five years. If you don't live in Luxembourg, you have the option to ask. Another big difference from the United States, then, is what we're going to see with the Grand Ducal Palace. So, in fact, while there is an important separation of the executive and the legislative branch in the United States, here in Luxembourg, the two institutions sit together. So you actually find a secret door in the Grand Ducal Palace that walks right into the Chamber of Deputies. The Grand Ducal Palace itself, in fact, is not actually where the Grand Duke lives. The Grand Duke lives in Berg, but this palace serves rather as a place for important events. For example, when Nancy Pelosi came to visit Luxembourg, she was received by the Grand Duke here. But when you visit Luxembourg, take a look. If you see a Luxembourgish flag on top of the Grand Ducal Palace, you'll know that the Grand Duke is there that day. So from here, you can see one of my favorite views over Luxembourg City, the view of the Grund, the lower part of Luxembourg City. The Alzette River flows through the Grund, and here you can find some of the older parts of Luxembourg City. And just to my right, you'll find the remnants of Luxembourg's walled fortress city and the Casamats, where people lived inside the walled fortress. And you can still visit the Casamats today.
Here in the Cité Judiciaire, you'll find Luxembourg's court system, and specifically behind me, the Constitutional Court. That's like Luxembourg's Supreme Court. But also importantly here in the Cité Judiciaire is the city's elevator from the upper part of the city to the Grund, the lower part of the city. The Grund is the lower part of Luxembourg City and is one of the oldest neighborhoods of the city. You'll find really particular architecture here and it's also really special because of the Alzette River and the footpaths. You can also find much of Luxembourg's nightlife, bars and restaurants here in this area, the Grund, as well as some nice cafes and shops. The Petrus River Valley is a wooded area that runs below the upper part of Luxembourg City and it goes along the Petrus River. It is a great way to experience Luxembourg's nature without leaving Luxembourg City and it's a place that I come each day to walk and reflect. This brings us back to Pont Adolf, the Adolf Bridge which you see behind us. That's where we started this morning and we think this is about a good tour for a day. It's a great way to come and experience Luxembourg and get to see what the city has to offer. So, thank you for taking the time to join us. We hope that we will see you again very soon. Adi!